Now welcome guys back to the channel. In today's video, let's talk about probably the most interesting thing that flies or used to fly. And that obviously is the space shuttle. Yes, this is gonna be a pretty interesting video. Yeah, for this video, I actually have a pretty accurate model of the space shuttle Endeavor. Yeah, that's the very space shuttle that we're gonna talk about today. So let's take a deeper look into the actual cockpit of this spacecraft and see how it flies. And let's also do some practical flying with this very plane. I mean, spacecraft. So yeah, today let's also try to do the re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere and land this plane. Because landing this plane is genuinely underrated. It's super hard. Now, first of all, let's actually go ahead and talk about the cockpit a little bit. Yeah, this is what the flight deck of the space shuttle looks like. Yeah, this cockpit is actually on the modern side, especially considering its age. You know, the spacecraft came out in the 1970s. But yeah, we do have some glass instruments in front of us. Actually, there are no steam gauges in this one, only glass computer screens, which is, well, it makes sense. Because these instruments, they guide us down onto this very runway that we'll be landing on later. These are actually super duper important for the whole approach, really. So this will be pretty interesting. But yes, indeed, to the untrained eye, this cockpit, it looks very, very, very complicated. Flying this spacecraft was definitely not on the easy side. A lot of training had to be done prior prior to a flight. But for this video, we don't need all these switches. Indeed, all the switches that you can even use in this flight simulator are highlighted in green. So something that we can do is control the lighting. Super interesting, huh? Even though there is one interesting switch that we can actually use. Is it this one? I think it is. Just watch what's about to happen. Oh yeah, there we go. We can actually open the bay doors. Isn't that amazing? Now, but whatever. Let's actually fly this plane, let's do the re-entry into the atmosphere, and also land this one. Did I say plane again? Whatever. Now, a little disclaimer is that I do not really know how to fly this spacecraft, really. And so I don't know how to actually do the proper approach in it, which makes this video actually more interesting, doesn't it? Prior to recording this video, I only read a little bit about f landing this plane, really. <laughs> so this can be interesting. Can a rookie like me land this actual spacecraft? So you know what? Let's just go ahead and start this. Yeah, here we have the shuttle landing start. Let's just go ahead and do that. Let's spawn into the full re-entry situation, right? All right. We are now 5,340 miles downrange at 450,000 feet. We're flying at 15,400 miles per hour. I cannot read that speed properly because I'm a normal person and not American. Blah, blah, blah. Let's just click understood. And here we go. We are in space. We are right now flying above Asia or something. Now, in the position that we are in right now, it'll take us 20 minutes to land. Yep, we're gonna arrive in 20 minutes. Let's see where we are right now. I think this is actually Japan. Osaka International, that is Japan, interesting, okay. So yeah, we're just casually flying over Japan at several hundred thousand feet. In fact, we're at 400,000 feet right now. Okay, so as I have previously mentioned, we have some instruments here to guide us down onto the runway. This down here is more of a localizer, really, to make sure that our course is fine and we're actually flying into the direction of the runway, right? This here is the glide slope, and that'll tell us if we are high enough or not. Right now, we are coming in pretty fine. This is looking good. You know, I like how peaceful it is up here. Oh, I think I haven't said this already, but most of you should know this. We will land the space shuttle without any engine power. We're basically using this plane as a glider, really. Because as you could just see, there is actually no space for fuel in the actual spacecraft itself. So we'll basically do a dead stick landing, as you would call it. <laughs> now, they say that this part of the re-entry of the approach is the hardest part. At least it says it here in the simulator, and I definitely see what they mean by that. It can seem a little bit hard to stay on, on track, you know, but so far we're looking good. Um, you know, we're just cruising over the Pacific Ocean at 15,000 knots, which is, by the way, 15 times the speed of sound, and at 260,000 feet of altitude. We are coming in quite well on the localizer. The glide slope can be a little bit weird to read, but that's another story. Um, <sighs> is that Hawaii? It might just be Hawaii. Alright, looking good. 
So the way you read it is that this is actually the space shuttle, and this is where the space shuttle should be at when it comes to altitude, meaning that we are a little bit high on the approach right now, but it's just fine. We're just gonna, you know, descend a little bit more than, and we are now getting closer and closer to our destination. In front of us, we can even already see California. All right, now it's been a while. We are now over California, actually over the desert. We are getting closer and closer. The thing is, again, that we'll have to glide to our destination, which is going to be quite a challenge, I guess. Uh, the thing is, though, isn't the airport down here? Oh, yeah, this is genuinely the airport that we're supposed to land at. Yeah, that's quite embarrassing. Okay, so we're a lot closer than I thought we would be. But that doesn't matter. Let's just glide down to the runway and do a smooth and buttery landing. Yeah, that went by a little bit quicker than I thought. <laughs> now the question is, which side are we going to approach? Let's just go for the 2-2 two -two side, I don't care. Let's just go straight in, fly this plane a little bit like a fighter jet in GTA 5, you know. What are all these things down there? I don't know, the Californian desert is a little funky. Alien measurement devices. All right, we're now on final approach, runway 22 at 14,000 feet, which would sound weird if I wasn't a conventional plane, but no, this is a spacecraft. The glide slope angle is a little interesting. I think this will be genuinely successful. I'm kind of proud of myself now. Probably the procedure in real life is a lot different. <laughs> I probably did a lot of mistakes here, but that doesn't matter. Let's just go ahead and land this plane. Just keep the plane at this angle and wait until it touches down by itself, and that'll be a smooth one. There we go, very nice. Let's go ahead and initiate the chute as well, the parachute, and this was pretty smooth. Oh, oh goodness. Oh, we are actually overrunning the runway, Jesus Christ. Oh no, that was unexpected. That was not too good. Yeah, this plane doesn't have reverse thrusters, obviously. It doesn't even have a working engine, at least when you land. <laughs> but really, that was not too bad. I gotta say that we landed a little bit late. There we go. We were a little off center line as well, but that doesn't matter. That was actually not super bad. Yeah, this does give me a sense of pride. Let's do something very illegal. Let's uh, fly more of a modified version of the space shuttle. There we go. Oh, the tail. All right, there we go. As you can see, they now build fuel tanks in this one. Oh, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.